Road traffic accidents have continued making headlines in the Zambian media. The death toll as a result of these traffic calamities remain excessively high. This is News In Depth with me, Efim Pande. Today on the program, Penny Fasiga looks at the spate of road accidents in the country. Grim pictures of the stark reality of lives lost on the Zambian roads. Hundreds of lives have been lost in the past years, and the situation seems to be getting worse. Statistics recorded in 2013 alone are frightening but true. Over 29,000 accidents occurred on Zambian roads, with over 1,800 people dead. Unfortunately, scenes like this are becoming everyday news. It's like truck drivers are going to call you then when they missed. So, so visibility when they leave them in the so on corner now on a cheap or full piece. The Zambia Police Service, which manages the traffic department, confirms the horrifying numbers. In 2013, we recorded 29,118 road traffic accidents as compared to 2012 where we recorded 28,247. Now if you look at the figures you find that there's a difference of uh, 1,701 uh, which is representing about 6.2% uh, 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 in the reduction of road traffic accidents. Now. Uh, though we recorded more accidents in uh, 2013, we recorded a, a smaller number of people who died. Now uh, that is 1,851 uh, compared to 2012 where we recorded 2,360. Uh, the, here there's a difference of about 509 representing 21.5%. Uh, Many will remember the bus accident in Chiwombo, which claimed over 50 lives. Mazabuka, more than 10 lives were lost. Chirundu, the car belt and Kapiri accident, which also claimed more than 10 lives. So, where should the journey in rewriting this sad story of accidents, now recorded on a regular basis, begin from? Many of the accidents have been recorded on intercity routes. The question everybody is asking is why? Is it the driving? Or is it the bad state of the roads in the country? Bus operators feel that the Zambian highway is narrow and dangerously small. Road infrastructure, I think, in many parts of the world has enhanced uh, or reduced the levels of uh, accidents. Uh, it also comes in itself with its own problems of over speeding and all sorts of things. I hear other other places with dual carriageways and highways also have their own uh, problems when it comes to accidents. But in terms of Zambia, um, I probably believe that the roads are a bit too narrow, and uh, probably if they were a bit wider. If we had more road markings, if we had more signs, if we could keep the portals off and the waves on the roads, uh, maybe that would help. This is especially true in instances where two big vehicles are driving past each other at fast speed. Our current diameters on roads are very minimal when it comes to overtaking. Our maintenance on our roads are actually not very equal. So we get a lot of uh, uh, un unwanted movement of, of, of vehicle when it comes to straight roads, curves, turns. Uh, I think the main, main factor is just maintenance of roads and uh, dividing both lanes. I think that would uh, reduce a lot of uh, accidents. The main accidents that we've been having is a lot uh, in, in, in conjunction with uh, head-on collisions. 
head on collisions are mo the most uh, made accidents right now. So, I mean, uh, if we do uh, divide the, 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 bus, the buses and trucks, uh, including other vehicles, we would have minimal accidents on, 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 on our roads and they would be more, more safer to drive on. Is the Road Development Agency concerned with some of the sentiments from the public on the state of the roads? We, we have uh, a standard uh, width of, of these roads, uh, PENIFA. And uh, these standards are not just Zambian standards. They are static uh, uh, standards that obtain in the, in the region. And those are the standards that we are, we are, we are using as, as a road development agency. For instance, uh, you have a width of a road that is about maybe 6.5 with each carriageway uh, or lane being about 3.2 somewhere there. That is the standard width uh, of a road because uh, the, the, the normal width of a vehicle or maximum width of a vehicle uh, does not exceed uh, 2.5 uh, uh, meters. So we construct our roads with the maximum width of a vehicle in mind. While there are initiatives targeted at improving the road network, a concern still arises on why accidents are almost becoming a norm. Can the accidents be avoided? Passengers are concerned as well. <laughs> We've compromised the safety of the passengers uh, by the operators themselves. I think what has come out is that uh, most of the operators would uh, uh, prefer getting money from the passengers without giving back the safety to the traveling public. What has been pertaining on the ground is that once the operator acquires these operation licenses, they forget the actual agreement which uh, is abiding on that act. Um, they would present a competent driver with all the varied requirements like the PSV driving license mm -hmm. and they acquire because they're supposed to have a, a one driver who is introduced to RATSA and make sure that this the person will be driving the passengers, but they are just being used as a forefront. Immediately they acquire the, the documents, they forget about these drivers. The Commuter Rights Association feels more needs to be done to protect passengers. They are also engaging insurance companies to devise an insurance scheme to assist passengers after an accident. However, they are concerned. Bus operators only insure their vehicles and not passengers. As an association, we've put it across ourselves to see to it. First, we need to protect ourselves uh, when it comes to safety. Um, uh, I'll cite one example. Obviously, for one, one to travel using air by plane, obviously we've had uh, a situation where I would want to insure myself before I board a plane. Okay, this has been happening. Mm -hmm. We've insured our vehicles year in, year out. Maybe you can't even involve yourself in an accident, but we've, comp uh, we've complied to insure ourselves. Now, we want to take it to the traveling public that we sensitize them, uh, we advocate for this, that they understand the importance of them to insure themselves. Mm -hmm. We've left our safety into the hands of wrong mm -hmm. people, the operators who are just interested in making money. We've lost our variables, we've lost our luggages, we've lost, lo lost our beloved ones. And a number of people, they've, uh, their limbs amputated, meaning they are permanently uh, uh, disabled, where they cannot do anything. So we are looking at a way of trying to help them sustain, sustain themselves by ensuring that we start uh, buying insurance ourselves. Drivers facilitate the movement of passengers from one end of Zambia to the next. Are they responsible for this increased road carnage? Yes, we are aware. We've heard of the suggestion of night travel. Like I said, you know, it takes a lot of factors to come together to actually um, cause a devastating accident. Uh, I won't say that night traveling at night might not be one of the causes. 
could be one of the causes, but I don't think it's the only cause. Um, again, you would have to have a lot of study undertaken to work out whether night travel in itself can uh, or will reduce the number of accidents to a significant level. Um, is it possible to totally reduce accidents? I don't think it is, but uh, I, I think you can at least try and make it safer for people who follow the rules to at least not get themselves in situations that might cause uh, a fatal accidents. Um, in terms of the people we carry, um, for instance, if we were to leave Kitwe at around 14 hours, we would probably arrive in Lusaka, depending on traffic, depending on the weather, we would probably arrive in Lusaka around 19, 1930. I've heard suggestions that maybe buses should park around around 19, so it would uh, probably 1920 or thereabouts. It would probably mean us stopping operation around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Whether that would hinder the movement or free movement of people between the Copper Belt and Lusaka, I think uh, would be left to the people who actually undergo the study and see whether it is necessary for such a decision to be made. When you are, you are driving as a driver, you need to get rest. But you find that these other buses, for other driver to rest is very difficult because he sleeps just by the uh, the chair here. So, for someone, you know, when you want to race, you need to be stretched nicely so that, like our buses, as I'm saying, that they have got their bed outside there. Once you sleep, then you feel comfort. It's different with sleeping on the uh, on the chair. Just like someone who's just, you are sitting, then you start dozing. So somehow you... Sit. ...that have mushroomed throughout the country, but then would want to appeal to would be drivers to just go to recognized uh, driving schools. You know, it, it's not it's not just about walking into a, any driving school. It's not just about knowing how to move a vehicle. It's being competent on the road. For one to go on the road, they have to be competent. And after that competence, at least after two years or so, they should go back to do a defensive driving. Why defensive driving is because most of these um, uh, road accidents that we've had are caused by human error. So if you know how to defend yourself on the road, such accidents can be avoided. For these drivers under intercab okay. bus service, some mechanisms have been put in place to help them deal with fatigue. This is an issue considered to be a contributing factor to poor concentration on the roads. These drivers who traverse between Lusaka and Johannesburg only command the steering wheel for four hours each at a maximum speed of 95 km per hour and the exchange is monitored by camera and a computer-enabled device. Could this kind of remedial measures be the answer for the local routes where reducing accidents is concerned? Once when uh, someone is driving, the other one is resting, then it helps us. Uh, well, it, it just depends. I can drive more than four hours, but uh, sometimes we follow according to the role of the company. Because the row of the, uh, these buses as uh, carrying passenger, the row it says after four hours, someone must get first. The other one must eat. It doesn't matter. No matter where you are going, where you can drive uh, as many as you can, but uh, uh, we follow the procedure of uh, a PSP drive, how it's supposed to be. You know, it's good to have some uh, knowledge because we are driving people. We are keeping people in this bus because we need to focus on the road and we need even to, to know the way you are driving. It's supposed to know that I'm, I'm with people because it's not uh, easy just to drive uh, like uh, it's a track where you can just carry a good No, These are people. It's good even some of the companies in Zambia to have the policy like we need to.
What more should be done to address driver attitude on the roads? We have drunken drivers. Rats are acquired these gadgets to detect one who is drunk at the higher cost. But these gadgets are not being, are not being used. So I think it's a major, a major concern to us that uh, drunken driving or dr the driver error, this is a major cause of our uh, road traffic accident in our country. We've advised Ratsa to be inside the bus stations, intercity bus terminals, um, Korima Tower bus st uh, station, or seat market, where before the bus goes out, they should test this driver uh, if he has taken any alcohol so that he, he, they can stop that driver to, to go out to that bus. Mm -hmm. We have uh, bus, uh, bus around uh, major bus stations. Mumba bus station, adjusting to Mumba bus station, there's a bar. Intercity bus terminals, around Intercity bus terminals, there are bars. Meaning, as these drivers are waiting for their buses to be loaded, they are busy drinking out there. The increased road traffic accidents have drawn the attention of Plot 1. President Michael Sata has directed law enforcement agencies to find practical ways of dealing with the problem of road carnage. The Road Transport and Safety Agency is among government agencies tasked with the mandate to ensure road safety. They have a huge responsibility on their hands. The number of fatalities are too high and we just have to do something about it. So I think through the technical people of this program, we'll be able to collaborate and see how fast we can carry out these processes. The solution to this accident needs to go beyond the boardrooms. As Zambia police, we've intensified our presence on all the roads throughout the country. Uh, this does not mean just the major roads. We do the local patrols as well, as well as, well as uh, highway patrols. As Zambia police, we are also doing a lot of sensitization. We go on electronic media. We also do some printouts that we distribute on the roads, in schools. And then uh, using our schools liaisons unit, we do sensitize uh, pupils in schools so that they get to know about uh, traffic awareness. The RDA says it is improving its road maintenance unit, which is newly created. It is the mandate of RDA to ensure that uh, not only are we constructing roads, but for the existing roads, we must maintain them to ensure that they save us for a very long time. So maintenance is, is, is a very uh, critical component of the operations of the Road Development Agency. In fact, for own information, uh, we have a department uh, at RDA that uh, you know looks at maintenance and nothing else but maintenance. So we, that, that directorate is called the Directorate of Maintenance, whose responsibility it is to look at uh, issues of maintenance of our various roads. You know, we have different types of roads. We have uh, trunk roads, main roads, district roads and, and feeder roads and uh, maintenance covers all those different uh, categories of, of roads. And yes, uh, every year uh, we, we have what is called a road sector annual plan. Mm -hmm. And in that document, we dedicate uh, funds for maintenance of the various uh, roads that I've, I've talked about. Uh, for instance, this year, 2014, we have uh, uh, approximately 693 million, which has been set aside for maintenance of roads and emergencies. Bus operators have their own recommendations, and so do passengers. Short term, as for now, probably would, would probably be would probably be best to probably have a little more uh, patrolling in the short term, because the rest of these other things probably take a lot of time and we need resources to be put together. But in the short term, maybe you could have a little more patrolling in the evening. And, you know, try and uh, let drivers be aware that over speeding up in the evening might be a problem. Let them be aware of uh, maybe a little more sensitization about road safety and, and uh, drinking on the roads and things like that. So probably in the short term, I'd say more sensitivity to the public who drive and also to those who don't, because sometimes these accidents are caused by pedestrians and cyclists. Um, and on top of that, a little more patrols, I think, if it's possible for that to be done.
In terms of helping, we, we're looking at uh, just dividing dividing traffic, uh, uh, incoming uh, uh, right traffic to load, uh, left traffic. We're looking at uh, if we if we do if we are able to divide them, I think it would make much uh, more sense driving on uh, on the highways. Look, accidents are they everywhere in the world? But I mean, we're looking at uh, ways to reduce the accidents. So I think if if they do provide left. Uh, you know, as, as a, in terms of uh, dividing uh, oncoming and going traffic, I think that would, that would actually help quite a bit. Well, for now we can talk about uh, infrastructure. It's the enforcement part. That's why we have a problem. Because if we talk of the infrastructure, I think we've been seeing a number of uh, uh, public vehicles, buses coming in in numbers, and. Uh, I think for the people who have mandated to, to give out the operation licenses to these bus operators should look at the limit if we don't have the infrastructure and they should make sure that what is required or what is expected from these operators uh, it sh should be adhered to. If we look at the speed limiters, we used to talk about the issue of speed limiters on these buses but that was compromised. They were supplied to these operators but they were being tempered to these people will know where the checkpoint is or the roadblock, where the roadblock is. They will put the normal speed uh, on the bus. After they leave that checkpoint or roadblock, they taper with the speed limiter. The bus will start going like uh, no, 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 nobody's business. So on this also, it's the law enforcers to make sure that they employ more inspectors to do that on time and time again to check on these buses. When all is said and done, travellers and pedestrians alike just want to be assured of their safety once they embark on that journey on the Zambian road. This calls for shared responsibility by all, especially those charged with ensuring that roads are in a good state and indeed traversed by sober-minded drivers. That's all we had for you on News In Depth. We were looking at what many have termed as traffic horror on Zambian roads. Send us your comments on today's program through social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook. Make a date with us again next week with another interesting edition of News In Depth. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.